So Brian. Oh my God, we are in a hotel room right now on the 19th floor in Tribeca with this inspiration behind the camera. Carpe diem, sexy as the new hot, miles over here, beds over here. <laughs> Trust your gut, be as passionate as you possibly can about that, whatever that one or two things are that you want to, you know, to, to, to become, you know, your business. Yep. And number three, research the heck out of it. A lot of what I do all day long in as an entrepreneur is stuff that's not exciting, it's not fun. You don't want to see me working on a proposal 10 hours a day and running Facebook metrics and figuring out the messaging and like these are all things that I've literally spent the last 40 hours this week doing, um, but that's just real life stuff. So some of it's sexy, some of it's not. We do the best we can with the value. Hope this is fun for you to watch. Good to be back in New York. Thanks for being here. Cool opportunity to, to take that thematic scheme of love in the air and apply it to, I think what I love about you is I think that we are both really doing something that we love with everything that we have. That we're very passionate about. So love of business, I think is a cool kind of way that we can structure this. Tell us a little bit about, you know, give us the quick Cliff Notes version. It's, I know it's hard, you have a lot of amazing things going on, but give us the quick Cliff Notes version of who is Dorotea? What are the things, what are the two, three, four things that you're working on right now that you're most excited about? And then I think that we'll jump into some, you know, everyone wants to know about how to become a brand and how to be, right. become a branding expert and to be paid to do it or to use the skills that you have to implement to make their businesses better. I think we want to jump into that with you because you are one of the most top experts in the world around that. But before we get there, tell us who you are. Okay, brilliant. So, um, born in New York City, so we're in the city of my birthplace. I always feel a little bit of a connection here. Uh, raised all over the place. Um, uh, recently, I was, uh, uh, and I do want to talk about the How Conference because that's yes. I was. I was recently introduced to the How Conference, and um, you know, I have such a challenging last name. Coupled with the fact that... Uh, <laughs> I just want you guys to know I nailed it on the first time. He did, but when we started recording, it was like... The first thing I got. You totally All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll so, talk about it. So, um, yeah, so my background. So my background is in neurolinguistic pathology and machine to machine learning. I actually worked as a law enforcement strategist before I got into what I was doing today. Uh, I had a life event, as you well know. Uh, there's a TED Talk about it out there. He was there too that day. That's yep. how we met. New York uh, Institute of Technology will put the... Uh, TED Talk thing up as... Oh, as that'd be smart, but yeah. yours and mine, I think that would be brilliant. Yeah, yeah cool. We should do that, because right. that's how we met. Um, yeah. And uh, because of that life event, I decided to pivot. Um, and you know, so that you know, in 1999, every door was closed to me. Um, and I had to create my own doors. Why was that? Uh, I had lost, as you know, the love of my life, um, my, my sort of, my anchor, right? So I had to recreate my foundation. And I think it was from that that I really started to build my own business. It took me a few years, yep. as you know, any endeavor should. Of course. You know, you don't, you know, flip a switch and it happens overnight. Um, but from that, I built social espionage, uh, and because I come out of you know law enforcement and law enforcement tech, I should say, I was able to build from there. Uh, my practice is in four areas: digital transformation, uh, enterprise social networking, community building. Um, technology, so I do a lot of work in marketing tech. But the final thing, and the thing that I think we're really talking about today, is my personal branding practice. And I do that from everybody from so, solo, or solopreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. Which a lot of us, we interact a lot with solopreneurs. Yep. Um, to celebrities, to C-suite executives, uh, to people who, they have a full-time gig, but for whatever reason, they, they have that entrepreneurial bug and they want to start their own business. Yes. So that's sort of, uh, that's what I do. So it's great, that enough time? It's amazing, perfect. So I want to unpack a couple of things that you said during that recap. The first thing is the 1999 reinvention. You know, there are a lot of people, that we, our audience is mostly 18 to 35 year old entrepreneurial types, yeah. but, uh, and, and, and globally, right? And, mm -hmm. and I think that's what's exciting also about you is that you are a global uh, entrepreneur. So a couple different things. The first thing I want to ask you is, when you were reinventing yourself, mm -hmm. And for anyone that's trying to reinvent themselves, whether they're just graduating from college and they have no idea how to make it in the real world, or they're 50 or 60 years old and they're about to retire and they want to do something different, or they're 32, they've been working a full-time job for 10 years and they're ready to get that entrepreneurial bug, uh, take, take, take that leap, what are the three most important things that you would say 
were the pillars of your reinvention? Number one would be trust your gut. Mm. Really trust your gut. Trust your, uh, your, your, your thoughts and your emotions. If you have a passion for something, that's number two. Really start doing everything you possibly can for number three, which is research the hell out of it. Mm. Okay? If you are passionate about horses, which I believe I love horses, they're majestic animals, you know how much I love horseback riding. Um, if you're really passionate about it, know as much about it as you possibly can. Look, I'm not saying you have to get a PhD in it, but I am saying if it's something that you're passionate about, you know, when you're little, and I think I talk about this a lot in my talks, you know, my Nona Volpe, my grandfather Volpe used to say, you have two eyes, two ears, and one mouth, use them accordingly. Mm -hmm. Think about that in the way when you're researching. Listen, learn as much, you know. I, I have to say that I have done more listening in my business than anything else, and that has been the most successful thing for me, you know. So if I had to say those three things, yep. it would be trust your gut, be as passionate as you possibly can about that, whatever that one or two things are that you want to, you know, to, to, to become, you know, your business. Yep. And number three, research the heck out of it. You know, um, watch, pod, uh, uh, watch videos, listen to podcasts, read, you know, and, and, and write your opinions. You know, just because somebody says something that may not be something you agree with, but everybody has their own something, yes. you know? And I think that those three things are really the pillars of what I utilized. Um, now, gosh, it's almost, I could say almost 20 years ago now, 1999. Uh, it's interesting because when I look back at what I was and what I've become, not that I think I'm all such, such great thing. It's, it's not that. It's the journey. Yes. You have to really embrace the journey because you're not going to be good at something straight away. It's practice and, and error. But here's the great thing, and I always tell people this when they have maybe a hiccup or what they, what they consider a failure. Keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Keep looking forward. Because you can't change the past. You can't really hold on to regret. That's ugliness. It's, it'll, it'll eat away at your insides. You'll yes. feel rotten inside. Keep moving forward. The more you move forward, the more you start building, you know, whether it's your business or maybe a plan for a business or toward a career or an education in something, the more you become whole and fulfilled. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. And so, you know, so the reinvent that, that's great for the three pillars of reinvention. Then you mentioned it was now it was time to start your own business. And that took a couple of years to get really going. Uh, fast forward 17 years later or 20 years later, you represent a, a lot of the biggest brands in the world. And I don't know who I can mention on camera, so I'll let you do that. But yeah. the, um, you know, I, I, you've shared some stuff with me that, that, that I know kind of the quality of the clientele that you have. I think so many people are confused, especially our audience, that it, it happens quick. And I, I, I'm very, very vocal about the fact that it doesn't. Right. You know, I'm six years in and I'm still working like 80 hours a week and I'm still like hustling every like chance I get. What were, what would, what would the pieces of advice you have to share with people that are just getting started? First of all, like, from a client, you know, from a, we'll, we'll talk from a client services perspective. Mm -hmm. From a client services perspective, what did you do to get your first one, two, five, ten clients, mm -hmm. like practically? And then the second thing is like, what kind of mentality have you been able to build over the last 20 years that's been helpful for you to continue to reach new peaks in your career uh, that you would attribute not only to the quality of the client services that you provide, but to your mentality? So number one, yep. there is no overnight success. Let me repeat that. There is no overnight success. Zero. Yeah. I mean, you talk to people, when, and you also read articles, right? Yep. You know, uh, artists like Christina Aguilera, who kind of started out in church and singing and so on and so forth, and it wasn't until she had the opportunity to have an artist showcase that people were like, wow, this, this young lady really has a voice. Um, you know, you, you look at um, people who've gone into politics, and how the, what the steps were for law school and understanding political science and so on and so forth before they got to where they're going. The Beatles played in a, a strip clubs in Germany. In Berlin, yeah, yeah. in Germany. All for Germany. like and, and years. And Malcolm Gladwell talks about the 10,000 yes. hours that they, That's they actually took where to get I them to, yeah, yeah. To, 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 to really get them where they needed to be. You know, there's an old Shakespearean saying that uh, perfect practice makes perfect. Mm. And you really do need, so number two, practice at your craft, you know. And, and then I'll, I'll say entrepreneurs are incredibly brave people because they're going out and they are putting something out there that maybe 
doesn't exist because it's their voice. And there's a thing that we all struggle with, and this is number four. Um, we struggle with putting ourselves out there because we have to. You know, it's kind of smarmy to network, right? To have to shake a hand and, and have to say, you know, do your elevator pitch, right? Um, you're very conscious of, you know, obviously, oh, am I nervous, you know, a am I articulating my brand and what it is that I do well? You know, it's uncomfortable because you're in a room full of strangers. And if mm -hmm. you are an introvert that forces themselves to be extrovert, as I am, believe it or not, my first couple of, um, you know, networking events as social espionage were extremely difficult. Um, I was very nervous, very new in my business, so the confidence level wasn't really there. But I sort of forced myself mm -hmm. into doing it. And then after I was done, you know, I felt a little bit more confident. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like building muscle memory, mm -hmm. you know? You begin to work out and you begin to go on your journey. And then before you know it, you got two or three clients that believe in you and they also start talking about yep. the good work that you do. So my whole goal was really toward how do I build a business, but how do I build a business of the type of customers or clients that would become my raving fans, my raving advocates. I love that. You know, and that's really what helped me. So how'd you do it? Um, by being authentic, by being vulnerable, by saying, hey, look, I'm a young business owner. Um, I, I want to really learn your, your business. I, I never walked into somebody's company and said, oh, you're doing that all wrong. You know, I, I spent more time in discovery. Yes. Uh, listening, investigating, learning about their business. So then I could then help them. Well, have you thought about this strategy? Or is this something maybe that we could consider? And I really believe that all good marketing is based on very good analytics and research. Mm -hmm. But also what I like to call test and learn. You know, you, you test an idea out, whether it be a campaign or a new strategy. You figure out if it works, mm -hmm. right? You do little small incremental things that don't maybe cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And what ultimately it does is it creates some organizational confidence in how you actually do business. So once you create that organizational confidence, whether it's in social media or community building, or maybe for that matter, a B2B company doing their first ever campaigns, uh, you know, digitally, um, it really helps them sort of see the light, right? Because what you're doing is you're not just going out on your own, but you're holding the hands of your customer yes. and taking them on the journey and helping them understand whether or not something is successful. And it's okay to fail. Yep. But what's the old saying? You know, you fail, you fail early, yep. you learn from it. And again, I'm gonna go back to what I've said before, keep moving forward. Yeah, and I think it's a really important point that you're making about the, bringing your customers. And, and I think that a lot of people, so when, when we told people in, in our community that you were gonna be on the show, there were some questions that came in about um, starting a brand sort of from scratch. Mm -hmm. The, the two big questions were like, how do I start a brand from scratch? And the second question was, uh, why do I feel like, they, they struggle with credibility. What, what, what kind of credibility do I have, Johnny or Jane or Susie or whatever, or Jose, or Jose to start mm -hmm. my thing? Yeah. When, I'm, when I'm kind of, maybe my career hasn't been as an entrepreneur. So the first thing I want to say is like, Part of the way that I view a lot of the work that we do, we do similar work, is we are paid to show our clients something that they don't see. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I think that it's, I think that anyone that's watching or listening, because we're going to put this on the podcast as well, that is in a client services basis, you have to understand, like, you're not a robot. You're not, you're not just like, Yes, ultimately you have, you know, the, your, your, your boss or your client has the final say in terms of what happens, but part of your job and the way that you become the best in the world is by thinking for your client in ways that your client has never thought before and not being afraid. Like, it's a really good point you're making. You take their hand, take them to the place. Don't wait for them to guide you and then take action as a robot in terms of what they want suggest things to them think of out of the box things one of the things that i do that works really well every day i write down 10 ideas 10 ideas 10 ideas and the 10 ideas can be really really bad i give myself permission to have really bad ideas 99.9 .9 percent of my ideas are complete shit. but like that 0.01 percent you know maybe i connect you with uh somebody and that connection ends up being incredible and that's like the thing so ideas are really important and, and that includes bringing ideas to your clients. Second thing I'd say is the branding from a perspective of getting started. 
We started a little bit with the three pillars. Yes. Um, you know, being being somebody who you know first trust your gut, go after that thing that you're passionate about. So once I and then learn a lot about it. I right? found it. Horse riding. Yeah, if you've done those three things. I would say get a website. You okay. have to have a website and start a blog. Start talking about it. Okay. And here's the thing: go out and interview people who've done you know, what you want to do. It's okay to make them part of your podcast or your blog or whatever it is that you would like to do. But I, I, I'm a really big fan of blogging and I'm a big fan of podcasting because okay. those are great ways to kind of stake your claim. And I, I want to also, if I could, draw some attention to my, my teacher. Yes. So the woman that started this company is a client. Strong is the new sexy. Isn't that great? It's cool. So um, uh, she, I'm a cancer survivor, as you know, yes. and um, she started this company called Wayne Anthony Designs. Please follow them on Instagram, Wayne Anthony Designs. We'll put it up, yeah, Wayne exactly. Anthony Designs. She star uh, started a company to really pay homage to her brother's passing. Okay. And Wendy's got a really brilliant background. She was a graphic designer. She still has a full-time gig. Uh, she's from uh, uh, Jamaica. Uh, and Trinidad and so uh, she's got this really delicious accent um, but the thing that I really like about her as an entrepreneur is I'm not joking when I say this every day that she wasn't at work or de you know taking care of her family she has two children on the weekends and at night she's designing mm. then she literally took a job I'm not kidding <coughs> at a screen printing shop Right, to learn how the printmaking sort of process for t-shirts and, and that kind of thing. And her line of t-shirts, for men and women, I might add, okay, is really around paying homage to her brother's passing, wow. but also to people in law enforcement, people who've been, uh, you know, who, God bless them, have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, protecting our country. So it's really about strength. It's, it's about putting yourself out there. It's about going through hell and then being able to create something at the end of that because she did that in her brother's passing mm -hmm. um, and he died very senselessly somebody uh, murdered him over a pair of sneakers a pair wow. of trainers can you imagine and that's what what happened and she took that and again you know let's talk about catalyst i i lost my partner that was a catalyst for change she took that and that became a catalyst for business and she's successful and completely lovely and very hard working but you know if you are starting something out you know, after you've done those three things, and when I say talked about learning, you know, as the third thing, you know, go out, research, learn. Here's somebody who took herself completely out of her own business because uh, she has a full-time job as a graphic designer and a user experience designer, and she went and learned printmaking. Hmm. She went and worked at a T-shirt shop yes. on the weekends and at night to learn how uh, the process of making, you know, this happens, and then also how her designs would render. Mm -hmm. uh, she would spend time with models and videographers on the weekends to create the content for her various social media channels. And as I was working with her to build the brand, you know, it's so, I get a little, you know, uh, emotional when I say this, but there's nothing more romantic than being part of an entrepreneur's life and them having a dream, an idea for a business, and then seeing it come to fruition. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. I mean, it's just so, it's so lovely. So I'm very, I pr very proudly wear. I think the that's cool. That she's and so you know, it's 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 that combination of having the vision, but then actually taking the action to do something. Mm -hmm. And and it's Indeed. what you're saying is smart too, because again, a lot of a lot of comments that I get are, I I, I don't like my I, I have a passion. I'm gonna quit my job. And I'm like, whoa, mm. maybe not the best idea, right? Yeah. I mean, listen, if you have a year or two years or three years of runway, you've been saving money and you can cut down your costs, go for it. But it, Again, I think it's so important that in this world of entrepreneurship porn, I call it, where everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. It's like you, the, people are so out of touch with how much work and how much time everything takes. So don't quit your job if you can't afford to quit your job and not make money for the next six to 12 months because it's sometimes in some cases it takes. So what she did was smart, work a graphic tease, you know, design job in the night, in the weekend, get to know, get a get a client, get another client, get another client, get customers, customers. So that's another thing. The credibility piece is something a lot of people struggle with. Why should people listen to me? Yeah. What do you have to say about that? And I think that a lot of people struggle with that because they don't realize the one of the number one rules uh, of the universe, right? Tell us. So the world works like this. There are two spectrums. There's fear and there's love. We're all gravitating. We're all pulling and pushed toward either one of these idioms. Okay. Right? Yep. 
credibility and confidence come out of a place, or lack of credibility, uh, or, or lack of self-confidence comes from fear. And I want to make sure I'm very clear when I say to someone, look in the camera. When yeah, I do it. I love it. Yeah. We're looking right at you. We all have innate capabilities that make us different from everybody else that does exactly the same thing. So if you're a graphic designer, if you're a surgeon, if you're a marketer, we all come at it differently. We all have a different personality. And what personal branding really is at its core, personal, personal branding is the perception or emotion maintained by somebody other than you that really describes the essence of what it's like to have a relationship with you. Who you are, what you're about, how you articulate yourself, right? Mm -hmm. How you accomplish a project or a task or something. So it's really important that you embrace the fact that you're you. And it's okay to be authentic and say, I'm learning about this, right? You may think, uh, I want to be a career coach, and you're 24 years old. And people might say, well, what does that little young person know about life? Hold up a minute. I've studied this. I've researched that. I've become certified. It's okay to authentically put yourself out there and what you've researched and what you've known, because that also brings you not only the confidence, but the credibility. Yes. And it moves you away from fear and brings you closer to love. I love that. Yeah. That's brilliant. I mean, it's so, it's so true. And what are people scared of? Well, I think that's a larger question. What are the three things? Because I, I can, I've seen, just from my community, and I, I interact with my community a lot, mm -hmm. um, I've seen three things that I think that are really, really the reason that people are scared. But I'm wondering if you have too. I know you're very active in your community as well. I, I think fear of failure. Fear of failure. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then not necessarily knowing how to get over a bad project or a bad client. How to move on. Yeah, how to yep. move on. That's why I keep telling people, keep moving, keep going, forward, yep. keep moving forward. And then I think the other hmm. thing, you know, the other thing, let's go back to the credibility thing, the imposter's syndrome, right? When there's ways to combat that, you know, and you sit, again, I sit and I hold the hands of my client and say, this is what's possible for you. Yep. Right? Yep. I'm seeing people are scared to fail in front of usually one person. Yeah. Partner, mom, dad, brother. I don't want to embarrass my family. You hear that a lot. You know? Yep. I just, you know, it's funny because I remember being little and writing in my journals about, you know, my career. And I do remember um, writing something at a very young age. And it was more about my Italian grandparents. I, I think I, I wrote something. That I just really want to make my no-no and my no-no proud. Isn't that funny? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I think we all inherently have Of course. That. Yeah. And I think, but it, I think that the important thing is, and if you feel like you are in that place, and you can be honest with yourself about if that's true or not, it either comes from a place where Nona and Nana were, 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 were so supportive of you, mm. and they loved you, and they wanted, they wanted that for you, and so you wanted to give them that gift, that's the that you're lucky if that's your truth mm -hmm. the opposite truth which i'm seeing a lot is my parents are actually miserable mm -hmm. and my success makes them feel more miserable so they're trying to keep me down and they're doing it in a very toxic way and it's hard yeah. because i want to make them proud right this is what i'm hearing but, they're making it hard. but it's making yeah so it's interesting um Moving, moving on to, to the next thing, the, the conferences that you're involved with. Tell us a little bit about these conferences. Tell us what you speak about. Um, tell us what you're excited about. What do you have coming up? What did, what did you just finish? Like, well, take us into that world. I'm glad that you asked that. I, interestingly enough, and um, I really want to do a shout out to all my Howies there. I was at How Live um, recently in Boston, Massachusetts. What a lovely group. Tell of us about How. So how is a uh, how live conference really focuses on the design, the branding, the packaging world. And this was the first year that they sort of brought marketing uh, and social media into the mix. And I feel so honored that not only did I have the opportunity to keynote, but I also um, had the opportunity to teach a workshop on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it's always a little nerve wracking because you're teaching Instagram to marketers, mm -hmm. to brand people, mm -hmm. and people who, and I think creatives are so incredibly brave and strong and, I mean, they so think out of the box. They're like us, but in a different way. And I can't even draw a straight line. So me for either. me, yeah. So for me, <laughs> it's like watching what they do and how they interpret the world. And I, it was such an honor. I mean, there were speakers there like Debbie Millman and Brian Collins and Tina Esmaker, who you met earlier today, Vanessa Dewey. Um, 
the gentleman from Coca-Cola whose name now escapes me, so forgive me, um, but really brilliant people who've been doing this for 20 or 30 years. So it would have been very easy for me to have a bit of imposter syndrome, but then I thought to myself, you know what, I've been invited to be here, it's such an honor. Mm -hmm. And I'm in front of some people that, um, you know, I consider peers, mm -hmm. um, even though they've been doing this for much longer than I have. It was such an honor to sit and listen and learn from all of them. And I think the thing that I really loved about the How Conference audiences is that they're very passionate about what they do in such an emotional sense. They're so engaged with and, and own, you know, what it is that they do, that I felt that there was a bit of empathy for me in the room because I was kind of a newbie to mm -hmm. their, their community. You know what I mean? Um, and it was so great to have, um, you know, here you are in front of 5,000 some odd people, and then you have this workshop where you're, you know, only in a room full of maybe four or 500. And they were so, um, warm and embracing. What was the takeaway? Well, for me... I Both from a personal perspective yeah. and also from a State of the Union in that space. Yeah, so, so what I will say is that we live in a world where we are constantly, constantly inundated with images. Yes. You know, the average person, I read this somewhere, so I want to make sure that I give him some credit. Jay Baer wrote in his blog, and it was research. The average person sees about 147 newspapers worth the data every day. Wow. We're just on the internet. Wow. And we remember only a handful of things from that, right? right. An article that we read or maybe it's a cool, you know, uh, branding piece or what have you. So there's a lot of glut of content. But we tend to gravitate toward the things that we find emoting, wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. Whether it's storytelling or a very interesting way of packaging is done. And I think for me, my takeaway professionally from this group was sort of that piece. You know, what are you doing to stand out? Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of the feedback that I got back from my talk. What do and you... from a personal perspective... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. From a personal perspective... From a personal perspective... Maybe I'll answer my next question. Yeah. Um, you know, I always get a little uh, sad when I have to leave those kind of events because you, may, you, you connect with and meet people that are just so meaningful you know you have these great meaningful conversations and then all of a sudden that person has to go yeah. back to where they live in los angeles yeah. or connecticut or you know uh ohio or well Washington, that's DC. that's like what happened with us yeah exactly right? and it was kind of sad but now i feel like i have a whole new group of friends that i'm now part of their tribe totally and they're part of mine totally so i've got a whole new group of people that i can network with that i can help um you know that maybe we can help one another get to that next level in our business mm -hmm. Uh, because we've had the opportunity to do exactly this, sit down and learn and listen from one another. And what um, what do you have coming up this summer? What's exciting? Well, I'm very excited and I have to thank you to thank. I am going to be speaking to and interacting with um, several uh, hundred, maybe a thousand or so, um, entrepreneurs in Africa. Uh, Afrobytes is Excellent. in Paris this year. Uh, and if you don't know anything about Afrobytes, can I tell the audience? Oh, so yeah, Afrobytes, of course. Uh, provide, we're big fans. We're huge fans of yeah. Afrobytes. Uh, how we and I mean, they're just such lovely people. They're so nice. They're so nice. Have you met them in person yet? I have. Oh. They're so lovely. We love you guys. Uh, if you're watching, we'll, we we'll send you. this to them. We love you, Afrobytes. Um, so uh, yeah, je t'aime, Afrobytes. So what I would say is What's that so there, it's this really great um, group. And it's a cons it's a it's a consortium really, and they go around the world. They've been to, to Asia now. They were in China recently, but it's predominantly a conference that is held in Paris, France, and they bring African tech entrepreneurs yep. to Europe to pitch, to learn about uh, their businesses, to share best practices, but also to put them in front of people that could potentially fund what it yes. is that they're looking to do. Um, and it's just so fascinating because to me, you know. One thinks, oh, you know, it's, the business is so different in Africa, or it's so different in the Netherlands, or it's done differently in the UK. At the end of the day, you and I both know this, people don't buy from companies. They buy, they from, buy from people. Exactly. It's all about relationships. And, and when, when entrepreneurialism, when you've got that bug, and like I said before, it's so romantic to meet people who have this little germ of an idea, and then all of a sudden it becomes a reality. And you're part of that journey. It's, to me, it's kind of romantic, but I really love it. I love that. I love that perspective. So, um, I wanna I wanna close out with this with this question. 
Uh, first of all, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, well, thank I, you for having me. I'm, I'm so honored. I was this super is, excited is, about this. This is huge because we're doing it. You guys don't see this, but we're in my hotel room because it was so loud everywhere else in the city. <laughs> so we had to kind of, we did this sort of guerrilla style, which is great. Uh, which I love. And it's yeah. it's very much aligned with, and there's like noise. Um, so if you hear some noise out there, if you hear some noise from the street, I'm so into this idea that ne- if you're waiting for everything to be perfect, you're going to wait for the rest of your life. Oh, most definitely. And like, I just love it that... I mean, when we started talking, like, oh, we were gonna, we were gonna do this in the in the VIP lounge upstairs, and there's like a kid playing on the ground, and we were like, uh, and and I was just like, how can we do this? And you're like, well, let's just do it in the room. It's just such a, it's just such a immediate sign to me that you're like such a winner, because it was just like you went instantly to the solution, like yeah. solution, solution. We can do this. We can bring the lamp. We can bring this yeah, lamp. Yeah. We'll set the trap. Done. Last question for you. What? Yeah, I, I loved, I can't repeat right now exactly word for word, but I loved what you said about what personal branding is, yeah. right? Which is the, the external world's perception mm-hmm. of what you are through hopefully a very authentic reflection that you have put out, mm-hmm. right? What is, what do, what is your wish that the external world, how the external world would describe Dorothea's brand? Oh, wow, that's a really deep question. Um, you really put me on the spot on that one. Um, I think that, you know, I, I was interviewed once by, uh, to get a consulting gig by an automobile brand. And here I am, you know, my own little company and I'm against Bain and McKenzie. And these people were just eons of experience. And they put me in a room and they interview all of us as a group and then singularly, and it's one of those panel interviews, so you're sitting there like, you lose like 10 pounds, sweat's going down your back, and you've got gravy stains, you know, you were just trying to make it work. And you're, and you're not easily intimidated, so this must you know, have been a moment. It was at the beginning of my career, as okay. my own business. And I think that I'm going to go back to that and cool. answer your question in All this right. way, that back to that story. They ask you a question in the interview. What's the one word in the English lexicon that describes you? Now you speak Spanish and English and I can speak a few languages and English. You have to pick one word, mm-hmm. just that one word. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty greedy. I like the English <laughs> language. There's a lot of words that I would pick. Um, <laughs> and what I would say, even the cameraman's laughing, he's like, I couldn't do that. I mean, it's difficult, right? <laughs> so the Bain and McKinsey person asked to leave so they could think about it. And they gave you the choice. You could leave or you could stay. Uh, okay. So I said, well, I, I don't need to leave. You don't? No, I know what my word is. You do? And I've learned this from a very early age. My word is inspiration. Hmm. If I can inspire somebody to try a new technology, try out a new strategy, make that campaign, kick it off, right? To kind of be the risk taker. Mm -hmm. Remember that hand holding piece? Mm -hmm. To take that risk with me. I'll jump into the abyss with you, but I'll hold your hand. You're not alone. You're not alone in this. If I can inspire other people then I've done my job. Hmm. Whatever that action is that they take. So I'll, I'll go back to, what's, would you ask me, what's the thing you want people to... What would, how would the how external would they, world describe your brand? Inspirational. Love it. Does that answer your question? It really does. I'm so honored. Thank you for being here. This is such so a great. pleasure. Uh, we'll, put your, we'll put your Instagram handle up and everything just so people can follow you. Um, you know, if I were to describe your brand, I would say that you have figured out a way to design an intentional life around everything that you love Mm. without separating them or pretending to be anything other than your 100% authentic self in every situation, which really doesn't actually change based on the world that you're living in. So you're the same with your niece. Hi, Leticia. Leticia, I don't know where you are. I I can't believe you're not here right now. But, um, (laughs) But, you know, we heard about London, congrats. Um, as you are with your client, as you are with your friends, as you are with your friends' teams, as you are with the woman that I met before who you were having me. It's just, Dorothea doesn't change, but you've been able to develop a beautiful dynamic life in which most people would think that in order to navigate it with the success levels that you've had, you'd have to be a chameleon. And I think you figured out a way by just being you to be good with being you in every situation. And I think that that's ultimately the reason for your success across many different 
areas of, of people. So I learn a lot from you every time I see you. I love being with you. Uh, thanks for being on the show. I'll see you guys next time. Ciao. Cool, yo. Good job. Mwah. Good.